Welcome back to another episode of PTV. I'm James Krausar. And I'm Nathan Fisher. Students who met certain requirements got a recent surprise when they found that the App Store had returned to their iPads. Damien Gregory explains more about the return of the App Store. Students who've collected good grades can now collect rings with Sonic or have fun with other apps as the App Store returns. There's actually four requirements. Uh, the first one is you have to have a 3.5 GPA or above. The second one is you cannot have any behavior points. The third one would be you cannot owe any fees to the school due to enrollment or lost books or anything like that. Uh, the fourth is actually a level. You know, if it's a 3.5 GPA is the uh, first level, we, al we also have a level where you can have a GPA of 3.0 to a 3.49. And if you do not have any Ds, then you would also qualify for the App Store. Students utilize the App Store in many different ways for both fun and education. Honestly, I get games that are, I get games that are pretty fun and like, are related to what I do. Like I got a couple games about sculpting the world and we're sculpting an art. The idea of adding the App Store even came from former students. Okay, the App Store idea actually came from a group of seniors. I couldn't even tell you how long ago this was. It's been a few years now. Um, they have the uh, problem solution projects in the English, senior English class. And a group had put together the ways that they could get the App Store back for good behavior, good GPAs, uh, not owing any fees and things like that. And uh, they pitched their, they did their sales pitch. I listened, Mr. Gower and I both listened, and uh, we kind of agreed this would be a good way to have some kids, you know, get that app store back. Honestly, I'm really grateful for it because when you think about it, they said it was a senior project from years past, so they didn't even get it, but we did. And it's because of their ideas, so I think we should continue that for other classes and moderate it so we don't lose it. While some games may be educational, they can still cause problems in class. Mm, that's a really accurate statement, I guarantee you. Like, just everybody is definitely plays video games more than they should. But people just need to moderate it. For PTV, this is Damian Gregory. Although February is the shortest month of the year, PHS clubs are certainly packing it full with many activities. We'll start by taking a look at how Student Council sponsored a special Super Bowl week earlier this month. Take a look. Do you know who Patrick Mahomes is? Well, yeah, who does it? The PHS Student Council recently designed a Super Bowl Spirit Week. People got to proudly represent their favorite teams and players. The first day was devoted to... P-A-T-R-I-C-K M-A-H-O-M-E-S. Plenty of students showed up wearing Mahomes' jersey, but what did they actually know about him? 26. Um, <laughs> 27. A girl. Brittany Lynn Mahomes? Great question. I don't know. <laughs> 2011. Mahomes wasn't the only player in the spotlight, though. Tuesday's theme was... T-R-A-V-I-S-K-E-L-C-E. -E. I'm more Mahomes, but sure. On Wednesday, people wore their team colors. Most of PHS agreed on who the best team was, but there were a few exceptions. Kansas City Chiefs have been my favorite football team for almost 50 years. Chiefs. <laughs> the Chiefs. Uh, the Chiefs. Gotta go with the Broncos. Anybody but the Chiefs, but mostly the Broncos. For PTV, this is Hallie Jerby. After Super Bowl week, the FCCLA honored their organization by celebrating a special week as well. Here's more on that. FCCLA celebrated their organization with a special week full of fun. FCCLA week is a national celebration that goes along with our organization. Um, we are working to make people more aware of what FCCLA is all about and what we're interested in. From delivering snack mix to club members to sharing drinks with the teachers, the week focused on showing appreciation to others. 
Well, today a couple FCCLA members came around and gave me a bottle of lemonade. Well, it made me feel appreciated, and I think it's always nice when clubs um, in our school recognize, you know, not only the students, but teacher, teachers and staff as well. Another way FCCLA shared kindness to others was to make and deliver a Valentine's meal to special couples. For PTV, this is Hunter Miner. This week is a special week, too. Do you know which organization is celebrating right now? Well, I've been seeing a lot of hats being worn this week, so I'm guessing it must be an FFA week. That's right. Carson Meidel shows us more on that. To celebrate FFA week, Phillipsburg FFA created a fun week of activities. FFA week is a week-long celebration um, across the United States with all FFA chapters. FFA members showed the teachers their appreciation by making breakfast for them. My favorite part of the FFA week is making the teachers breakfast to show appreciation we have towards them and all of the time they uh, put towards FFA and the support they get. The activities will continue throughout the week. Our FFA week is a kiss the goat challenge with the teachers. Students pay money into cups with the teacher's name on it. And the teacher that raises the most money has to kiss the goat at the end of the day. For PTV, this is Carson Meidel. Although there have been a lot of activity themed weeks going on this month, students still put their main focus on work in the classroom. That includes learning about the Great Depression in Mr. Hyman's history class. In our next segment, we'll get a taste of what they're doing in there. Take a look. To fully understand how the Great Depression affected people, Mr. Hyman's history class is headed to Mrs. Weizar's kitchens. Well, in our history class, we were learning about the Great Depression and how they didn't have a lot of supplies for cooking and all that. So we teamed up with Mrs. Weizar's class to come up with a low cost and low resource way of making meals. We give them a certain, you know, set of ingredients. It's not just anything they want. They have to research some Great Depression um, recipes and then, and then use foods that would have been available out here in the Midwest especially to make a meal that families might have eaten during the Great Depression. During the Great Depression, people weren't very picky about what they ate. We talked a lot about how during the Great Depression food was not necessarily all about um, beauty and aesthetics like it is now. We spend a lot of time now on food art and adding lots of flavors and making everything taste a certain way. Um, during the Great Depression when people were hungry and didn't have as much resource wise, um, food was a lot more about just filling your tummy so that it wasn't growling overnight when you went to bed. And so it wasn't so beautiful always and it wasn't even so tasty always. Sometimes it was just something to fill your stomach so that you could get through the day. I think it turned out really well. Um, there were some different recipes this year, very interesting. Um, some students tried some things that some worked out great and some not so much. So, But it's always a good good time to give it a try. For PTV, this is Michael Vanderveen. I tried some of the fried cornmeal cakes that one student made. And, well, let's just say I'm thankful we're not in that kind of depression anymore. Me too. Most of those recipes didn't include any meat because it was so expensive. I would have had a hard time with that. Speaking of meat, Miss Dick's animal science class has been learning a lot about animals in a creative way. Luke Hoover explains. You're going to pull it. Guess what happens if you don't while all students are required to take a health class, students in Miss Dick's animal science class take it to a whole new level. Yeah, so for the past two days, well really the past two weeks, we've been in our animal health unit. Um, this is one of my most hands-on units uh, because I think it makes it more fun. So on Friday, we did castration. Um, and I think that's something that's important for them to learn, uh, even if they never have to castrate an animal ever again. Um, it's good for them to know as consumers why we do the things we do. Um, and then today we were doing suturing um, just because I think, again, that's an important skill for my kids who are going to go on and be nurses or doctors or veterinarians. Um, give them a little bit of a heads up on that. Today um, I went ahead and showed them how to do it first. Um, so I brought in my bananas as my patients, um, just in that way it's humane versus them finding something to sew up that could be a little dicey. So um, we do that and like I said I like to show them how to do it first. Um, prior to today we watched videos, we went through a presentation just so that way we knew what we were getting ourselves into today. The knowledge students get from these lessons could help them in everyday life and their careers. 
if something ever happens like an incident at school or even at home or anything like your mom cuts her arm you know exactly what to do and it's just nice for all the farm kids they can help their parents out if a cow ever has an incision for ptv this is luke hoover presenting teachers as taylor swift songs featuring songs such as this is why we can't have nice Mr. Bowman, I'm sorry, I swear I got to school on time. Cause I knew you were trouble when you walked in. You need to calm down. You're being too loud. Uh, hey, Pac. I didn't get my PTV story done. Well, I know, but like, come on. What? We have a deadline coming up. No one likes a mad woman. February is a fun month if you have a special Valentine. Yeah, well, even without one, it's fun to celebrate Valentine's Day, and I especially enjoy when class gets interrupted by Amanda delivering lolly, a singing lolly, Valentine's. Lolly, 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 pop, lolly, pop, lolly, okay, lolly, lolly, now I can't concentrate. Just watch this. Time has brought your heart to me. I have loved you for a thousand. Spreading love and happiness, the PHS Amendment continues the tradition of singing Valentines. Today, the amendment has been going all over all of the schools and around Phillipsburg for singing Valentines. What can make me feel? We've done singing Valentines longer than I've even been at Phillipsburg. Um, it's a yearly tradition and it's also a nice little fundraiser in the spring, um, but it's just something fun and it's something that all of us look forward to. You are my candy girl, and you're Along with spreading joy to others, the amendment also had fun as a group. It's special because uh, we get to get closer like as, in a, as a group, as the amendment, and we just get to spread happiness and love on Valentine's Day. Um, I really liked my brother's reaction to his because it's my senior year, it's my last time doing it with him, and he, I've just been able to watch him grow and stuff, so he was kind of like dancing along with it, and I was hugging on him, and it was, it was just a good moment. For PTV, this is Adam Mascarenas. Amendment members weren't the only ones showcasing their musical talents. That's right, the PHS band held their winter concert, and our next segment will show you how that went. <laughs> Sixth through twelfth grade showcase their musical talents at this year's band concert. Having our annual winter band concert today. It's the 31st. There's no basketball games tonight. So there was Junior High Scholars Bowl yesterday, and between all the activities, we were able to schedule our band concert. As the year progresses, students are improving in a variety of ways. I think we did a lot better with our dynamics. Last concert, we got the notes and everything, but I think we put more emotion and how we played it. Students preferred some songs over others. Um, I liked the Avengers theme song because it was a lot different than what we would normally play. Usually we play classical pieces, and I like this one because it's something that everybody no. My favorite song was probably Blue Ridge Mountain, just because of the emotion put behind it. For PTV, this is Nathan Fisher. February is full of activities as we've already seen, but there's something else that usually takes place at PHS during this time of year that, well, isn't an official activity, but definitely is on the mind of a lot of students. I think you're talking about the mad scramble to find prom dates and to match everyone up in a way that gets as many people to prom as possible. And some PHS students are finding creative ways to make that happen. Take a look. Even though prom doesn't start until April, some students decided to get an early start with their prom proposals. Let's take a look at them.
and pop the prom question she did. Let's take a look at another one. All right, let's do this. For PTV, this is James Grossar. Welcome back to another episode of PTV's Love Connection. I'm your host, Erin Johnson, and today we have our very single and ready to mingle, Dayton Huguenin. How are you, Dayton? I'm pretty set. I mean, good. A little nervous. I would be too, but don't worry. We have some real A-listers lined up for you today. What are you hoping to get out of this experience? I'm looking for a deep connection with someone as beautiful as I am. Alrighty then. Let's have a look at our contestants. Hi, my name is Kyla Kinney. I'm a senior and I'm like involved in like everything. Also, the cameraman is like really cute here. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a sophomore at PHS and I do track and tennis and I'm a basketball manager and I'm in love with Dayton, like since I first laid eyes on him. And if he's watching this, make sure he knows that. Like seriously, make sure he knows. <clears throat> oh, are you ready? Okay. Um, my name's Trinity Gross. I'm a senior at Phillipsburg High School. I do track, basketball, volleyball. That's pretty much it. Well, Dayton, what an interesting group you have to choose from. Do you know who the lucky lady's gonna be? Uh, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> uh, my mom says contestant number three, Trinity. Okay, before we send you two lovebirds on a date, let's see the girl's reaction to your pick. <laughs> he didn't pick me. <laughs> me? Really? Ah, he'll come around. Oh man, lots of mixed emotions there. Good luck on your date and we'll check back in with you later. So, tell me everything. How was the date? It was good. Okay, let's see what Trinity has to say. Well, honestly, I thought it would just be me and Dayton, but his mom's cool too, I guess. Dayton, you brought your mom? She said she wouldn't let me out past seven unless she drove. I hardly even noticed she was there. So, where did you go? We went to Sonic. Sonic, and not even inside Sonic. We car hopped. You're kidding. So serious. I didn't even get anything either. I just sat there and watched them eat their ice cream. Mom asked her if she wanted anything. It's not my fault she forgot her wallet. So, what'd you do after Sonic? Uh, nothing. Mom dropped her off at her car, and I had homework to do. But I'll never get that half an hour back. <laughs> so, I'm guessing no second date then? Um, no. I don't think so. Dang it. I think that wraps up this episode of PTV's Love Connection. This is your host, Aaron Johnson, and this has been a mess, honestly. I just knew he'd be back. Ah! <laughs> it's supposed to be me. I don't understand why you didn't pick me. Are you freaking kidding? I wonder how much of that love connection skit was real and how much was acting. Yes, some of it seemed so real. That reminds me of the acting skills that forensic students have been working on as the new season is in full swing. Aaliyah Brunick shows us the recap on how the forensics team is doing. Seeing someone talk to a wall in day-to-day -day life is not usually a good thing, but at forensics, this is a normal occurrence. This year started off strong in Colby with the team finish of second place and seven state qualifiers. The champion in duet, uh, code 4A, Kennedy and Ledwick. Although this was a good meet, some were more than a little nervous. I am excited and also am, I was pretty nervous at the beginning, but now I'm pretty comfortable with it. Others were just excited to get out and practice. I'm performing in Poi, which is like a poem and a serious solo and like an oration all together. And then I'm also doing an oration. This street continued in Norton, where the team plays first with four more state qualifiers. The team then placed second at Sylvan Lucas and had another state qualifier. And first place, 5A, Silverberg, 
This season is just getting started, but some students feel that this will be a great season. So my first year of forensics is going very well. I was very surprised with how me and my partner did in IDA, and I think it's been great so far. The team once again placed second at their winter jam meet with two more state qualifiers. Second place in IDA. The team now has 13 state qualified entries and are ready to continue the season with the same enthusiasm. For PTV, this is Aaliyah Brunick. Now it's time for our PTV Sports Update with Luke and Carson. Hey Panther fans, it's time for your PTV Sports Update. I'm Carson Meidel. And I'm Luke Hoover. Hey Carson, congratulations on qualifying for the state wrestling tournament. Thanks Luke. Our wrestlers had a good day in Boy at the regional tournament. Dayton Huguenin was there to bring you this report. On Saturday, the wrestlers went to Beloit for their regionals. We were at uh, regional wrestling at uh, Beloit last Saturday. Um, and we were trying to qualify as many as we could to go to the state tournament this weekend. Sophomore Seth Keaton is pleased with his performance at regionals. I think I did good. I did good on riding. I lost to a Marysville kid in the semifinals. But overall, I think I did well. This tournament was jam-packed with PHS wrestling highlights. The one that was sticking out in my mind was Blake Bursch at 132 in the backside semifinals. Um, we're riding the guy, and the guy gets up on the edge of the mat, getting ready to get an escape, and he ties up with Blake, and Blake just tosses him right to his back and pins him uh, to qualify for the state tournament. That really sticks out in my mind. Um, there's a lot of other ones. You know, Jackson Irwin. Um, hitting some good takedowns there on the backside quarters to make it to the, you know, one match away from state. Uh, you know, there's just, there's just so many. Hunter getting a pin in the finals against the Ellsworth kid, and I could just go on for days, but those are ones that really stick out to me. The team got an astonishing 18 total pins, placing them in second in team points. You know, I thought we performed very well. Uh, we came out of their regional runner-up. Uh, we were only 10 points out of first. Uh, we had 18 pins during the tournament, and any time we can get bonus points like that, that's big to help the team effort. So I thought overall we wrestled really well. Six PHS wrestlers are advancing the state. Uh, we had Caden Sisson at 120 uh, play second. Um, Hunter Sisson, 126, place first. 132 was Blake Burst, who placed third. 144. Cole Keaton, who plays fourth, 150, Carson Meidel, who plays fourth, and then 157, Seth Keaton, who plays third. For PTV, this is Dayton Huguenin. Good luck to Bella Kazee and the six guys as they compete at state. Another team who has their eyes on the goal of making it to state is our girls' basketball team. They played Stockton in their final regular season game on Tuesday for senior night. In quiet senior night, it was as the seniors scored the first 20 out of 25 points. And that was just in the first quarter. Karen Side scored the first points when she drains this three-point shot. And a little bit later, adds another two. Then Heather Scamper popped off 10 points doing what she does inside the line. The senior magic continued in the second quarter as Austin Durking put in three baskets for six of her eight points on the night. The Lady Panthers headed to the locker room at halftime ahead with a score of 46 to 15. In the third quarter, the scoring was more spread out as eight different players put in some Panther points. The Lady Panthers went on to win 69 to 25. Coach Miller had this to say about tonight's game. Well, tonight was senior night, and it gave us an opportunity to honor our six seniors on our team. And um, we faced uh, Stockton, which was our last regular season home game. And um, we were able to come out with a win and secure our fourth um, NCL regular season championship. Senior Heather Skimper credits high intensity as a key goal for this game. We came out with a lot of energy. We were really excited and we just did a good job of doing our game plan, working on stuff that we did in practice and just ran through offense well and had strong defense. Senior Austin Durking plans on bringing that intensity to postseason play as the Lady Panthers start sub-state on Monday. 
my thoughts are just to go in with high intensity, have those high hopes and dreams, and make anything possible because this team is so much fun to play with, and we're really connected, and that's what it takes a lot because once you're connected, it's just fun to play with. We'd like to give Taryn Sides a special shout out and a big congratulations for surpassing the 2,000 point career scoring mark. She currently has 2,035 points and is the 24th leading scorer of all time in Kansas. Now onto the boys game. Last year, Stockton didn't even have a team, but this year they found six guys willing to give a good old fashioned try. It was clear early on that Phillipsburg would dominate this game as they cashed in 24 points in the first quarter, including this shot by Rad Rodriguez. Ryan Babcock had a good night from the three-point line as he hit this one in the first quarter. The Panthers shut out Stockton in the first quarter, and in the second quarter, the Panthers continued to dominate as Julius Stutterheim grabbed five steals on the night and put in 10 points. Phillipsburg led at half 43-3. In the third quarter, Jesse Blackburn picks up three of his game total 15 points with a tray. All 14 Panthers who stood it up for the game scored at least one point throughout the game and Phillipsburg ends up winning 81-24. The seniors enjoyed their final home game. Uh, tonight was a fun game. We got out, got after right off the start, so that way we get some of the younger guys some experience playing. Uh, I'd say our best thing was getting out in transition and getting points. We really pushed the ball up the court, and we had some shots too. A fun game. Yeah, overall, we played solid. I think everyone scored. I had two threes. Brian had two threes. Avery, Avery surprisingly shot well. As overall, good game. Good luck to both our girls and boys basketball teams as they begin the sub-state tournament on Monday and Tuesday. That's all the time we have for sports today. I'm Carson Meidel. And I'm Luke Hoover. Go, Go Panthers. Panthers! About five years ago, you might remember a PTV skit that aired which was called The Real Girlfriends PHS. Well, back by popular demand, we have a new season featuring some new girlfriends, so start cringing now as you watch this. On this episode of The Real Girlfriends of PHS. My name is Carissa Keaton and my boyfriend Jesse Blackburn. My name is Heather Skin and my boyfriend is Trace Hanchett. My name is Sophia Riffle and my boyfriend is Caden Seams. My name is Kins Corman, and my boyfriend is Ryan Babcock. You look so good today. Thank you. Oh my gosh. His size, I just, all the young can't be older. Aaliyah, get to work. My name is Aaliyah Brunick, and my boyfriend is Jackson Glendening. I may not say much, but I'm judging you. Close my eyes. I may not be good at math, but I can sure solve a lot of problems. I may be quiet, but I sure have a lot to say. Taylor Swift is writing love story about us. I'm number 20 on the court and number one in Tracy's heart. I live for hometown grounds. It's the perfect place to get a sweet treat. Clyde is just so senile. He just barks at random things. Oh my gosh, is that a Buick Enclave? Get out of the car, boy! I ever see the Hollywood sign. This is a burning Thanks, Kate, for picking me up. I was craving a latte. No problem. Thanks for meeting me at the high school. Now we have to go get Heather. I want a front seat, but that's all right. You just take it. So, Trace's squat max is really been improving. I know. It makes his butt look huge. Thank goodness you texted. I needed to get out of the house. We have to go get Aaliyah. She's just blowing at my phone. We need to get there now! Chill out. We'll make it. Bye. Is 
she paying gas money? I think not. Cadence may be my best friend, but she is a terrible driver. Ask the curbs. I just know what's about to go down like it does on the court. If I say something, they might not be able to recover. How would you just be nice and hand that on over to me? This is our hometown grounds. I don't know what came over me. I just lost it. <laughs> Actually, you need to get some cheese on your bones. Sophia really saved us back there. They were just so fibergasted. You just went to a football season! Yay! That wraps up this episode of PTV. I'm James Krauser. And I'm Nathan Fisher. Stay classy, Phillipsburg High.